children, and I don't see any small children here. You have five seconds to leave the room. Five, four, three, two, two and a half, two and a quarter, one. This is called Guitar Boot by Jim Carroll. I woke in a pool of mild chemical reaction. I stood up then in the darkness and felt what it was draining slowly from my ankles and fingertips. It felt like thousands Thousands of lesser hands weaving small flags beneath my skin. The darkness of the room hummed like a small machine. There was a thin red glow shining from the walls. I turned and noticed some strips of fluorescent light outlining a doorway. I felt over there for a switch. There was a button instead shaped like a V. I saw it was in a photographer's dark room. The liquid I had woken in was now almost completely dissolved across my skin. It must have been some agent used in the developing process. I began to check myself over for damaging effects. There were no burns, apparently, but my veins glowed with a metallic silver. I ran my forearms under some warm water but it only seemed to sharpen the effect. I figured I'd come back to it later. I began to take a look around. I found a drawer in a metal cabinet with my lover's name on it. I forced the lock and withdrew the contents. A box of color slides she had once taken of her ex-husband. There were a dozen of them, all of the same pose of him leaning naked against the lavender Prius. They obsessed me immediately. I emptied them in my jacket pocket and returned the box to the drawer, leaving it open. Pushed another V-shaped button and took an eight-seat jet back to the city. I never liked this man. I once read in my lover's diary of methods he would use in bed to please her. What I read haunted me many months. It reached such a clarity beneath my eyes when I lay beside her in the darkness, that for 16 weeks, I could not bring myself to touch her skin. This caused her to return to him every Sunday morning. When I discovered this, I led her out one night to the white cliffs of Kenobi, and with a shovel, dug a place for her to rest. When the time came that I eventually wanted her back, I realized that many months before she had forgotten how to breathe. I know guitar voodoo. I learned it from a woman with white hair in the hills above Kingston, who all day would slit open the crowns of oranges and raise them above her head for the sun to drink. One night each month, she would take the pale dried skins and leave them in mounds for the full moon to push back beneath the earth. This cycle gave her great power, and because I one day taught her the proper way to sharpen the blade on her knife, she gave some power to me. She opened the case of my guitar and placed three or six fingers on the pickups beneath the strings. She brewed a tea from the dry orange skins on the fire and taught me the way of guitar voodoo. When I returned to my apartment that night with the slides, I placed them in a plain glass bowl. I lifted from the dresser the porcelain sphere of the white-haired mistress had given me one year past. I knew that this was the time. The scent of the thick golden substance inside was sweet and true. Like a child breathing. This was a byproduct of what the sun itself had left behind one day for me. With 
my adrenaline rising, a slow heat formed like a fist beneath my heart, my hands clenched from power. I poured the substance into the bowl across the, the squares of processed celluloid containing his image. When the last drop rolled out, I set down the sphere, and though it served no purpose for the ceremony, I danced one hour before I slept. By the time I woke the next morning, the magic was already complete. I went to the living room sofa, and I laid the slides out on the table in two rows of six across the glass tabletop. I raised the bowl to my lips and drank what was left over. Opened the closet door, took out my guitar, hit the switch on the amp, and hooked the jacks. I closed my eyes as the potion took me over. There were small globes, the color of burst capillaries, framed by an uncertain gravity before a white expanse. Then an image began to focus. I could see, clearly as the sun, the man who was my lover's husband, lying in bed in his home in Northern California. He was just waking. Some shadows of morning light hung from the brass bedposts. He was sitting up now. He was sitting up now beneath a fancy quilt with his eyes fully opened. I took one of the voodoo slides and fingering on the neck of the guitar an A chord ran his naked, obscene image across the strings like a guitar pick. I saw the reaction as if standing behind a mirror right in his bedroom. His body shuddered violently on the bed. He seemed to be pulled a few inches up off the mattress. Until the sound finally stopped reverberating within the amp. The room was left with a hollow ringing within silence, like air within, within, like air within a nitrous oxide dream. He gripped his convulsing and stopped it. His eyes searched the room, looking for answers. He checked some objects on the bookshelf, praying with moving lips that something had been knocked over to sustain his hope that there was an earthquake taking place, that there was some natural explanation for all this, but nothing was moved. I was delirious with pleasure. I upped the volume on the amp to eight and ran the voodoo image across the strings, windmill style, like Pete Townsend. Vengeance was a wasted thing, I thought. 
It was causing sounds to come from him that human tissue wasn't capable of bearing. I slapped my hand across the pickups to stop the sound. I wiped the sweat and blood off of the glass tabletop and leaned over to switch off the power on the app. There was the last image of his body dropping limp and unconscious to the stunned floorboards of the room. I opened my eyes, I undid my butt buckle, and I slept for days.